right, we'll look at Griffith's electrodynamics, problem 2.5. What we're doing is we have another uh, charge configuration. This time it's a line charge bent into a circle. Um, and let me just see. So we got a line charge lambda again. Let me actually write that this time. So a line charge of lambda uh, bent into the circle. We want to know the electric field up here at point P. So um, in this case, again, we have uh, symmetry. So we know that, so say we look from this side and the electric field, say this is a positive charge, so the field will be pointing this, uh, this uh, direction uh, from, at point P, it'll be pointing this direction from uh, this little piece of the hoop right here. So we will have, um, up here at point P, we'll have a, a vertical component in the Z hat direction. Let me write that real quick. Z hat is pointing up. And we'll also have a horizontal component um, out radially from, from uh, this dotted line right here. But if we look at the other side, uh, we'll still have a Z, Z uh, component pointing up. Uh, but the, the radial component pointing out will be opposite to that uh, from the other side. Um, basically, so by the, the principle of superposition, these things will add together. Um, but because there's equal charge on, on, uh, on each side of it, the horizontal components will cancel out. And so all we're going to do is integrate around this ring, adding up all the little, the, all the contributions from all the little infinitesimal pieces of charge. And then uh, <coughs> all we're going to worry about is the Z component because the horizontal components will cancel out due to symmetry. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and write a formula for the electric field. We've got our um, k constant or, or whatever, the, the 4 pi epsilon naught out here in front. Um, we're going to be integrating. Um, so using Griffith's notation, we'll have this uh, cursive r downstairs. Uh, what the cursive r is, is just, it's the distance. So we're looking at just the magnitude here, right? It's the distance from a piece of this charge up to this point. So let me draw that on this side. It might be a little bit less cluttered. Um, there is a, a distance here. And if we want to actually make it a vector pointing from the charge up to the point, then we can put a little uh, arrow over the top of it. But yeah, this is the magnitude of that squared. Um, there will be also the direction of, uh, of that vector which um, which uh, we'll talk about later because, again, we're only taking the vertical component of this. So we're not even going to worry about the, the horizontal or radial uh, components of, of this, uh, this unit vector here. All right, and then we're integrating around a line charge. So our charge uh, term, that our factor that goes up here, um, uh, we, rather than doing a whole volume integral over a volume density, we can just do a, a line charge density. And um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, this source point. Uh, the, the, it's the position vector for the source point. Um, this, this would, lambda would be a function of this if uh, the charge varied in space with, um, along the line charge. So say um, you could throw a cosine term in there or something and say the, the charge goes away at this end and gets uh, big at this end or something like that. Um, so there are ways that you could do this. In our case though, lambda is just constant. So it's not actually a function of this, it's just a constant and we'll end up bringing it out of the integral. And then um, with our line charge, we also need uh, to integrate uh, with respect to a differential line element. Putting the primes on here because we're referring to where the, the location of the charge is 
rather than the location of our field point out here. So this is just kind of the generic uh, equation that could handle any line charge. Um, let's bring it into the context of this particular problem. So we will still have our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught out front. Uh, the lambda, like we said, is constant. It will actually come out of the integral. Um, and this, this r, this, uh, the magnitude of this distance vector from the source uh, to the field point is actually going to be constant all the way around this ring. So if we look at this point, it is the exact same distance from this point to every point on this ring. So this is actually going to be a constant as well. Um, so let's go ahead and bring that out. And we can, uh, by the way, this point is located a distance z above the center of this, right? And we can actually um, bring out, let's, let's put this, uh, this cursive r in terms of uh, z and the little r, which is the radius of the ring. All right, and it's just Pythagorean theorem, right? Uh, and it's even squared, so we don't even need the square root down here. So we, so we just have a, a z squared plus r squared. All right, and again, uh, these are both constants, bringing it out of the integral. Um, all right, now let's talk about the um, this uh, cursive r hat vector. I'm going to, so we could break this into uh, uh, like a, a radial uh, component, or we could put this into Cartesian components and use an x and a y and whatever. But like we talked about before, the horizontal components will all cancel out, and we're going to just be left with the z hat component. So, um, so f instead of this um, r unit vector, uh, we're going to use a z. Uh, unit vector, but we also have to take into account uh, we have to take the projection along the z-axis, so it we're going to uh, throw in um, if we were to draw the angle up here uh, this time we're drawing the angle up here then it would be the cosine of this angle um, so uh, let me bring out the z-hat vector and let's write in the term that would be the cosine of this. So that would be z over uh, the magnitude of this r, this uh, curly r. So, um, and these are all constants, right? Because uh, z is a fixed distance uh, to the point. So this, again, this factor is just because we're taking the projection along the z taking only the vertical component. So we have a z, and then we have, uh, the, rather than this curly r squared, we just have it to one power now. So we do have to have a square root down here, just like that. All right. All right, now on to uh, the integral. OK. Um, so this. Uh, dl, this infinitesimal length out here, um, that is actually going to be equal to the radius r and then whatever um, infinitesimal uh, angular displacement uh, d theta. So that's, uh, so if we were to zoom in on a little tiny piece of this hoop, the length of that little tiny segment would be r d theta. Um, and so this is what we're going to be integrating around. And again, r is constant. So we lucked out on this one. Um, the integration is really easy. Um, I'll just leave this in there for now because the, uh, just due to space. But we're really just integrating theta all around the hoop. So from 0 to 2 pi. All right. So I think we have all of our pieces now. The integral is super easy. Um, let's just see if we can uh, gather up what we've got here. So let's bring out the 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught out front. 
um, we're going to have uh, this z and this lambda. Okay, and uh, also this r, right? It was just a, it's just constant uh, for this integration. So uh, we'll bring that out as well. And now we just have these uh, things down here on the bottom, the z squared plus r squared. At, uh, multiplying these together, we just get it to the 3 halves power. So um, we have z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power. And then our uh, angular integration uh, uh, with theta here. May, you know, maybe I should have put a little prime on this uh, d theta just so we remember we're integrating over the source coordinates. Um, we, we have a 2 pi from that. Okay, so here we are, we're done. Um, we could uh, rearrange the order, whatever, if we wanted to make things pretty. I guess I did forget my z hat. This, this is a vector quantity here. So here we go. Um, so this is our answer uh, for the electric field at this point due to this uh, circular line charge. Um, as usual, let's just check uh, what happens if uh, z gets much greater than r, right? So we say we're getting very far away. Um, we want to know what this electric field looks like. We expect it to look just like a point charge, all right? Just like a problem 2.4 and um, uh, these other problems. So um, let's see what we get. We get a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, as always. Okay, so now, um, really, um, what we can do with this approximation is just make this r go to zero, right? This r is multiplied by this really big z, um, so we're, we're going to leave that in there. If r is very small, uh, r squared is much smaller, um, and we end up with uh, z squared to the power of 3 halves. So just a z cubed down here on the bottom and a z on the top. So that leads to just a z squared on the bottom. So uh, we have a 2 pi r lambda over z squared in the z hat direction. All right, so what do we have right here? Um, 2 pi r is the circumference of this circle, so the full length of the circle multiplied by the linear charge density gives us just the total charge. So right here, we just have the total charge up here. We have our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught out front, and it goes as the inverse squared power of the distance from, uh, from the ring. So this is, again, just the same as the electric field due to a point charge right here. So we see that in this approximation, as, uh, as we get very far away, from the ring, it gets smaller and smaller, eventually it will look just like a point charge.